The left-wing establishment received an absolute drubbing in the European elections. Across Europe, voters voiced their displeasure at open borders, net zero, rising Islamic extremism and an accelerating slide into a crappy trans race communism. I'm a big fan of communism by the way, it's the leading cause of death for communists. Of course, the establishment condemned this expression of democracy as anti-democratic. Apparently democracy is when you're only allowed to vote for them. I'm going to show the hilarious reactions of leftists, there's enough liberal tears coming up to quench a barbarian's thirst, it was enough to make you wish Britain was still in Europe. And I'll show why there's been a big swing to the right and how the left-wing liberal establishment is desperately trying to cling on to power. Let's have a look at the results first. In France, the national rally led by Marine Le Pen, who sounds like an enclosure for sea life but is actually a right-wing political leader, stormed to victory, winning more than twice as many votes as President Macron's own party. French liberals went no and smashed up shops in areas that are perceived to have voted right wing. Interestingly, none of the establishment media reported this as the rise of the violent far left or violent far left mobs terrorising citizens because these far left mobs are the street militia of the establishment. Some leftists didn't have the energy to burn down small businesses in the name of democracy so just cried instead. Macron said he didn't want to hand the keys of power over to Le Pen. Yeah, Putin doesn't want to hand power over to someone else either. That's not democracy. Macron also said he wouldn't resign no matter how badly his party did in the general election. It's incredible how the establishment will completely ignore the results of a democratic vote to preserve democracy. Interestingly, Macron's wife is 24 years older than him and seduced him when she was his school teacher and he was just 15. Emmanuel Macron, Hillary Clinton, what is it with left-wing politics? being married to people with an unhealthy interest in kids. In Belgium, Vlaams Belang, which sounds like an 80s pop star but is actually a right-wing political party, came pretty close to coming first. Some European right-wing parties want their countries to leave the European Union, like Britain did, but Vlaams Belang actually want the Flemish part of Belgium called Flanders to be separate. They want to actually leave their own country. The left did catastrophically badly. The liberal Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo cried after his Liberals and Democrats party suffered heavy defeats. Why is he crying? I ran for election in Glasgow and lost. I came about 39th out of 20 candidates and I didn't cry like this. My overwhelming feeling was relief that wouldn't have to live in Glasgow and pretend to care about the people who live there. I'm only joking Glasgow, I love you really. Hilariously, the establishment blamed the Belgian swing to the right on people being too stupid to vote for the correct parties. According to experts, Vlaams Belang scored better in areas where more people without university degrees live, while the environmentalist Gruen party did better in places with more highly educated people. Man, that doesn't show that smarter people vote left wing, it shows that universities are successful communist indoctrination camps. Although full marks were actually managing to somehow say stupid Flanders, there weren't many smiles on the left in Poland either. Grzegorz was elected in Poland despite having way too many Z's in his name and when he went to cast his own vote he objected to the EU flag being given primacy in the polling station and got it removed. I'm not condoning this guy but this is pretty funny. In Germany the right wing AFD came second beating the ruling SPD party into third place. In response the SPD member Lars Klingbeil called the AFD Nazis live on television. Ich glaube auch, dass das Ergebnis der Europawahl viele Menschen noch mal wachrüttelt, dass die Nazis. Considering you can be called a Nazi for liking a tweet by J.K. Rowling in 2024, this accusation doesn't have the same heft that it carried in 1937. The German government has the AFD classed as an extremist organisation so they can be kept under surveillance by the state, they've prosecuted AFD politicians and have discussed banning the AFD. And if you look at the actual Nazis, they were the ones into banning opposition political parties and persecuting political dissidents. Maybe the establishment needs to ask themselves if they're the bad guys. 
As in Belgium, establishment voices said stupidity is the problem. Here's a German influencer saying the youth needs re-education because they voted right wing. And in Britain, Labour's Don Butler blamed the rise of the right across Europe on incels. We were all warned about the rise of the far right and incels. The attack on woke feeds into this dangerous rhetoric. The surge in support for the far right across Europe is a warning for us all. Farage and reform and some Tories should be nowhere near power. So last week the Tories and reform were derided for drawing their support from middle-aged gamins, but this week, according to Don, they've completely jettisoned that demographic and appeal exclusively to young involuntary celibate men. It's the perfect time for the Skinner meme. By smearing everyone as far right, they make it easier for actual far right politicians. They've completely devalued that term. And people are seeing that these supposedly far right politicians don't match the hysteria. Italy's leader, Giorgia Maloney, was denounced as a fascist. She's turned out to be fairly sensible in power. A bit too sensible for my liking. The establishment are discovering that they're actually not the centre. Their mix of authoritarianism, soft communism, overspending, anti-family, anti-nationalist, big state and open borders makes them far left and people are starting to reject it. Surveys consistently show that voters don't want mass migration, particularly from incompatible cultures. A terrorist attack on the forthcoming Paris Olympics has already been foiled. What's the point in importing an ideology that wants to kill us? The left-wing establishment insist on open borders, however, because Western economies are basically a Ponzi scheme where GDP must continue to inflate to pay down debt and fund the care of a rapidly aging population, which means there has to be constant mass immigration to continually inflate the economy. And the Corporations who fund the left-wing establishment want mass immigration to provide cheap labour for their businesses and to inflate the prices of assets they own, such as property rentals. The left-wing establishment propagate the idea that mass migration is somehow a moral good and that diversity is our greatest strength, that there are no indigenous Europeans and whiteness must be abolished, and our colonial past means we deserve it all. If you want to see an example of how they do this, Pay attention to the adverts that play after this video. Even supposedly right-wing parties follow the exact same path. The only difference is that they say they'll reduce immigration as they hold the border gate wide open. Look at the Tories in Britain for an example of this. Europeans have finally got tired of being denigrated and lied to like this and have voted for actually right-wing parties to do the things that they want the government to do. This isn't a threat to democracy. This is democracy. It didn't stop the head of the European Union, Ursula von der Leyen, encouraging parties to form cordon sanitaires to keep right-wing parties from power. This is where all the other parties combine, regardless of their differences, to form a bloc that's larger than the right-wing parties. Together with others, we will build a bastion against the extremes from the left and from the right. It's pretty much the definition of anti-democratic. And this vote wasn't just a rebellion against open borders, it was also a rebellion against net zero. In the last elections, green parties had their best result ever, and consequently Europe has implemented pretty hardcore green policy, which looks and feels a lot like communism. A trillion euros of taxpayers' money has been pledged to green policy, energy costs have surged, and farmers have been hammered by regulations. And in places like the Netherlands, hundreds of family farms have been shut down to try and hit emissions targets, even though the whole point of the European Union being set up in the first place was to ensure that there's a surplus of food and we never have to go back to rationing or be dependent on imports from overseas. And we know the Green parties aren't really interested in the environment. They pursue a progressive raft of legislation covering everything from transgender ideology to open borders. And there's nothing green about either of those. Transitioning people means more plastic dick implants end up in the environment. And with regards to mass migration, when someone moves from the Congo to a developed European country, their carbon footprint increases 150 times. So if you want to keep carbon footprints down, you keep borders closed. People are worried about the environment, but they're starting to doubt if the solution is communism or transition kids. Green parties lost 20 seats at this election. There was some good news for the left though. In Italy, the far left Antifa member Iliara Salas won. She's currently in jail in Hungary awaiting prosecution for charges relating to attacking right wing people with hammers. I can't show the images here because they're far too brutal for YouTube, but you can see them on my Patreon if you want. I personally wouldn't recommend it, they're horrible. 
Of course, she was described in the establishment media as a cuddly left-wing activist. Here she is in The Guardian. Oh look, she's smiling and she has a nice cosy sweater on. And even the supposedly conservative Telegraph called her an Italian anti-fascist. Sounds almost romantic, as if she's zipping around Puglia on a Vespa, putting up posters and waving her hands around, doing some sexy arguing rather than plotting to murder people with a hammer based on their political opinions. Can you imagine anyone on the right who is involved in an attempted murder spree with a hammer getting this kid gloves treatment? Man, when right-wing people put up stickers, they go to jail for years and are denied contact with their kids. And in some other good news for the left, certain demographics still support them. Polish prisoners voted 85% for liberal parties. Criminals still love you, liberals. The places that didn't see a swing to the right, such as Denmark and Sweden, have centrist governments that already have tough anti-immigration rules. Maybe there's a lesson there for other centrist parties. Do what the voters want and then they won't vote for someone else. But the real good news for the left is that the right will inevitably tear themselves apart. The trouble with right-wing politics is it's inherently more individualistic than left-wing politics, so it's much harder to get right-wing politicians to coalesce around issues and stay united for more than 10 seconds. And there's bad news for the British right-wing. With Europe increasingly becoming inhospitable to migrants, they're going to be coming to Britain instead. And with a systemically woke establishment and hard left Labour Party running Britain, they're all going to be welcomed in. So that'll be fun. Anyway, thanks for listening. If you want to buy me a beer, there are links below. And if you want to support me making these videos, you can consider becoming a Patreon. You join an exclusive community of chads and chadettes and you get exclusive content. I've got an interview coming up with a global finance genius and with a Jordanian refugee who's going to give his perspective on the Middle East. Anyway, thanks for listening. I've been Leo Kears. Bye. Bye-bye.